It's pretty hard to compute once you get here. I mean, think about the computational power that's required to iterate something like this 31,000 times, right? It's pretty extreme. And you know, one thing that I think people wonder is, is this really pi that's happening? Or am I doing something funny where you could get any transcendental number or something like this? But no, it's really pi that's happening here. And it's also worth noting that you know, I came in here to the Mandelbrot set along the real axis towards the cusp, right? But you can do the same trick and play the same game with other points here. So it's also known that this happens if you come in towards this connection point. It happens here too, although, you, sorry, there's another component attached here. It happens at the attached point of that component, although in this case, coming in in lines isn't quite good enough. You have to come in on a curve like this. So your epsilon has to change a little bit as you're coming in here. But at all of these sort of interesting points where you have two components attaching to each other, or at this cusp here, you can find an approximation of pi by doing this process. I mean, the thing everyone's going to be wondering is, what <laughs> is it about the Mandelbrot set that gives it this pi-ness? So, <laughs> so I can give you an idea of what's happening here. So let's look at what happens at c equals 1 fourth, actually. So at the actual cusp, all right, so let's start with c equals 1 fourth and get some idea of what's happening here. So what is the graph? Now, OK, forget the complex numbers, right? <laughs> I'm just going to graph the function y equals x squared plus 1 fourth in the real plane. OK, so here's the x values and here's the y values. This thing looks like, well, at x equals 0, y is 1 fourth. And otherwise, it just looks like the quadratic function here. And this function actually hits right at the point x equals 1 half. So if you plug in 1 half to this, you get 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, which is 1 half back. right? So this function hits the line. Let me give it a different color. It hits the line y equals x exactly as a tangent at 1 half. Okay, so I know this all sounds weird, <laughs> but what I'm saying here is a way to visualize the dynamics that's happening to this orbit, because if you start at zero and you plug zero into your function, here's what you get. Now, if you want to iterate it, what do you do? So you start at, one f at x equals zero, and when you plug in zero here, you get y equals one fourth, which is this point. And now, if we want to iterate, what that means is we're replacing x with y. So we travel over here to replace x with y on the line y equals x. And then we evaluate the function there, which means we travel vertically until we hit the curve. And then we repeat this process. So travel horizontally until you hit the line, travel vertically until you hit the curve, and so on. Like a little staircase. Like a little staircase. And what happens in this particular case when c is 1 fourth, you never hit this point where x and y are both equal to 1 half. Your staircase just gets closer and closer and closer and you can never pass it. Now, here's where the interesting part where you see pi is, is if you make uh, this value of c a little bit larger than 1 fourth, again, let's look at the graph. So I'm drawing the exact same thing here, but now the curve is y equals x squared plus 1 fourth plus epsilon. Mm. Okay, so now the curve looks the same, but it's shifted upwards just a little bit. So here is, say, 1 fourth plus epsilon, which is the value at 0. And my, my line y equals x never hits the curve. And so when you play this same game, where you start with 0, you find the y value, make that your x value, and find that y value, make that your x value, find that y value, and so on. You actually can pass through here, but you have kind of a bottleneck where these two curves are really close together. And what pi is measuring is essentially the time it takes you to get through this bottleneck. And to be precise about that, it requires a little bit more complicated math, but that's the idea. So that, okay, so that bottleneck causes, you, causes our staircase all these problems, but obviously eventually we're going to get to 2 where it's just easy street again. That's right, that's right. And really what you're counting when you're counting this n is, okay, maybe like you have some extra ones where you're close to 2 but not quite bigger or something like that, but really most of the action is happening right around that 1 half, and that's what, that's what we are counting really. The thing I still don't get is why pi, like all I know about pi is circles. Okay. Like, is, is this related to circles or is this something else? It's a little bit related to circles in the sense that it's related to trigonometry. So it's related to a trig function. So the right way to really think about this if you want to see pi is instead of thinking of this as a sequence of numbers that you spit out, think of this sequence as a function. Okay, so... You mean this sequence here? 
Uh, sorry, no, this sequence. Okay, so, yeah. so imagine you're fixing some value of c, and you're looking at this sequence. And let's think of this as a function. So maybe this is um, f of 0, and this is f of 1, because it's your first step. This is your f of 2, because it's your second step, and so on. The graph of this function, what this looks like if c is close to 1 quarter, well, if c is equal to 1 quarter, then what happens? So f of 0 is 0. Let's put 1 quarter on here, too. So this is the graph of f for c equals 1 quarter. And then f of 1 is c, which is 1 quarter. And remember what happens in this case. We get closer and closer to 1 half, but we never hit it, right? So f of 2 is a little bit larger. But we have this line that we can never cross with the graph of our function. OK? Mm -hmm. And if c is a little bit larger than 1 quarter, I'll draw it on the same plane here, then almost the same thing happens. But we have this big stretch where we hover around 1 half before we go crazy. <laughs> the reason why you see pi here is because the portion of this graph here for c slightly larger than 1 quarter looks just like, and you can make this precise, looks just like the graph for the tangent function. And so you have this trig function happening, and I think at least you believe that pi occurs with trigonometry, so <laughs> that's why. Asking, okay, do we have infinitely many elements in this sequence which are prime? We could at least ask, as we go along in the sequence, do we get a new prime at each step? So that's the question I'm interested in answering. So here, okay, we don't have any prime divisors, but here, 3 is a prime divisor that never appeared before. 